Hey, Scott 80 here. Uh, this video is on Typhoon Odette, Super Typhoon Odette. Now, it is a Category 5 Super Typhoon, uh, one of the largest storms now ever to make landfall, once it makes landfall very shortly, just north of Shergau. Um, and now, this typhoon uh, was, you know, looked like it was going to be a run of the mill Category 1, Category 2 typhoon but it underwent rapid intensification today or, and, or last night in the Philippines overnight and early morning. And now it has become uh, similar on scale to Yolanda and Bofa, two uh, typhoons that were devastating to the Philippines. Now, um, this guy is talking about the automatic Dvorak technique. Now, this is uh, basically a measurement of intensity of a, a typhoon or a hurricane and it shows that the temperature difference between the temperature inside the eye and the, the cloud tops at the top of the eye wall. Um, and if that number is high, like is, that's a very high minus 90 Celsius, that is a crazy difference in temperature. That means that the eye wall has massive high convective clouds, which shows um, that it's a very intense hurricane or typhoon, I should say, super typhoon. And um, uh, the Dvorak technique is not, the most accurate technique, the best technique, the best way to measure a, a, a typhoon or hurricane is for the um, reconnaissance, reconnaissance flights that fly into directly into the eye wall and then they gather the data. I do not know if they did that with this system. It intensified way too rapidly. I don't think they can get uh, the, uh, the planes into there fast enough. So they're relying on the other methods, including the computer models, and and such but well, i mean this is a massive typhoon uh, no matter what and if you look also at that, that pinpoint eye in a storm that large that's a bad sign that that means um that it is an extremely powerful uh typhoon and this is going to be on the scale of yolanda like i said from 2013 it also went uh, it also underwent a rapid intensification like this one too this is from an app called windy.com. It's showing the track to go a little south um, through the southern to central part of Bohol and then over into the southern part of Cebu. But this is a bit of an older, uh, from quite a few hours ago, uh, track. So it's changed and it's intensified a lot since here. All the other models have shown a rapid intensification and Pagasa has recently updated their forecast to be a much more stronger signal. TropicalStormRisk.com website has the track um, going into the northern tip of Bohol, making a second landfall in Ubay Bohol as a Category 5 super typhoon, weakening rapidly as it hits land uh, into a Category 4 almost immediately, and um, then uh, going straight across into the Cebu area as a Category 4. And the reason... Uh, uh, typhoons and hurricanes weaken as soon as they hit land is because mainly because they lose their energy source, which is the warm water. And as soon as they hit land, they, they have no energy source anymore. And so they rapidly weaken. Um, the cyclone uh, and the uh, the circulation within the eye wall weakens too. You get a lot of um, wind shear uh, in the typhoon itself, especially when there's a region with mountains and there is in Bohol. So that's good news. So all in all, this is going to be another devastating storm for the Philippines. Typhoon Odette, it will go down in history as something as possibly as devastating as Yolanda or Bofa. Um, and, uh, and this storm uh, intensified so fast and rapidly um, that really people didn't have a chance to evacuate. And, and I, I hope I'm not sure exactly how many people are evacuated in like the coast of Bohol, maybe also Cebu, but I have a feeling that the Philippines, you know, they're very proactive after what happened with Yolanda. So I'm thinking they would be evacuating people or getting them into, uh, into uh, gymnasiums and shelters and that kind of thing um, at higher ground away from the sea level or, and get them up a higher ground. That would be a, the best thing to do. And also away from anywhere prone to landslides because heavy rain is a huge killer in these typhoons uh, more so than the wind i'm talking about storm surge and flooding um, if you look at the past history of philippine typhoons most of the deaths are from the storm surge initially and then the flooding and landslides caused by the torrential rain 
I know quite a bit about this subject. I took meteorology in college as a science credit, but if you want to learn from the real experts, uh, there's some great websites and apps out there now. The ones I showed on this video, windy.com, tropicaltidbits.com, and tropicalstormrisk.com. Thank you for watching.